How tough is it really to look bad in the name of progress? It's really fucking tough. And how tough is it to look bad in the name of progress when you are a champion, a world superstar? I have no idea, but I imagine it to be, you know, just insanely difficult. Uh, just watched the Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier 2 fight. I was surprised, didn't see that coming. I mean, I could have seen Dustin winning this fight, um, but not in the fashion that he did, not by knocking out Conor in the second round. And I've had a thought that I wanted to share with people that I think is insightful and useful to anybody, independently if you're in fighting or not. Um, here's one thing that bothered me about Conor when I was watching his preparation for this fight. And not just for this fight. The sparring partners, the people that he would engage with in sparring, in training, the people that would challenge him, test him in his skill set, usually were nobodies. Just local kids, local boxers that are on the up and coming. I'm not doubting that these people are really talented and have a big heart, but I doubt that any of them could really challenge Connor or make Connor suffer and look bad in those sparring and training sessions. And I think that Connor always had this issue, although in the earlier days, in his ascent, in his rise, the crew that, that he was around was incredibly talented and they were all up and comers. They were all really like rising in their in their careers, they were all getting to the UFC, all, you know, on a winning streak. So I think the the energy in the training room was different. And Conor McGregor wasn't Conor McGregor. He was just one of the other guys in, in, in the room. So I would imagine that people felt even more comfortable to really push him to uncomfortable levels, make him look bad or foolish at times. But now that he's a global superstar, now when you come in as a young up-and-coming kid that's poor and this is Conor fucking McGregor that you're sparring with? I don't know. I don't know. I wonder. I, I, I guess that it does affect how hard you push him and how much you're going to make him look like a fool. This is not even the important point. The thing that this reminded me of was GSP, George St. Pierre, one of the all-time greats, if not the all-time great, the number one kind of best to ever do it. I'm a huge fan of GSP. One thing that I admired about George St. Pierre more than any other fighter that has ever competed in MMA or in boxing in general, as far as I'm aware of, was GSP's willingness to look foolish in the name of progress, especially when he was already a global superstar, a champion, a legend, this always amazed me. I mean, if you do your homework, if you do a little bit of research, even on YouTube, you can find sessions where GSP did not look great. Like he would bring in, first of all, his gym had maybe more competitive level of um, fighter talent at the time that he was the champion. But on top of it, look at what kind of sparring partners or help he would bring into these to his camps. You know, he would bring in... Um, these Muay Thai, you know, I remember one camp, he brought in these two crews from Thailand. They were both Lumpany champions, just badass motherfuckers, just really incredible Muay Thai fighters. And he would bring them in and have him prepare, I think it was at the time against Condit, because he wanted to have better Muay Thai for that fight, Muay Thai skills for that fight. And they were pushing him. And it times not make, making him look great in these sessions. They were making it uncomfortable for him, but they were elevating his skill set. I remember him, uh, you know, bringing in John Wayne Parr uh, from Australia, another amazing Muay Thai fighter, kickboxer, to prepare. I don't remember who he brought him in to prepare for. And dude, John Wayne Parr was putting it on GSP. He was making him look bad in some of these sessions. Just incredible pressure. He was a, I mean, John Wayne Park was a better kickboxer, better Muay Thai fighter than GSB. So with bringing these champions, these, these legends, these incredible people that did not care about GSB. They were not young, wide-eyed, trying to make it in this business. They were already, you know, battle-tested legends in their own right. And they would come in and they would put it on GSP. They would pressure him. They would push him. Of course, they try to help him but the object was not for him to look good during the camp. The object was for him to look good in the fight. And 
he had an incredible humbleness. Like this is this is not easy to do to bring in people that will make you look bad when you're this famous, when everybody in your gym thinks you're the man, and then you you're bringing in people that will make you seem foolish or weak, or you know slow or whatever like incredible I, I even remember i uh, watched a video once it was for some fighting gear promotion where gsp went went there and there was some kickboxer a really good kickboxer i can't remember his name um and they were doing a little like a, a kickboxing sparring session in front of everybody and the dude made gsp look bad slow foolish again gsp was an mma fighter Right? He was not a pure kickboxer. So uh, when fighting against kickboxing champions that were incredible, he didn't look amazing at times. He didn't care. He had a sweetness and a humbleness about it and a willingness to expose that side of him that I think, I mean, it's just inspiring. And it is, to me, one of many reasons why he was able to maintain an incredible level during his championship reigned during his career he didn't just win the title he defended it so many times against incredible opposition and then he was gone for a number of years he came back and he got another title in another weight class which is very hard to do in mma but throughout it he always maintained a humbleness and a hunger and a willingness to look foolish in the name of progress Right. I mean, GSP would go and grapple at the Blue Basement, you know, at, at Henzo's, Henzo Gracie's in New York and grapple against just beasts. And again, I can't imagine him. I, don't, I haven't seen footage, but I can't imagine him in the Blue Basement. You can't look great you know, if you're not if you're not at the top of the Jiu Jitsu world. If Jiu Jitsu is not what you do, like, you know, 24, 7, 7 days a week, you're not going to look great in that room. You're going to suffer in that room. People are going to make you look bad at times because these people are better at grappling, better at jujitsu than you, right? No matter if you are an MMA champ or not. So just the kind of people that GSP would bring into his life and into these camps. And I mean, even I remember when he went um, and asked Joe Rogan to teach him the spinning back kick. And again, this doesn't seem like a big deal. So what? You're on a podcast, you're being interviewed by this, by this cool dude, and you ask him to teach you a specific technique. Just consider this. Again, at that time, GSP is the UFC champion. He's seen worldwide, worldwide as the best fighter in the world. And Joe Rogan is a fucking comedian and a podcaster, right? Yes, of course, he has also trained, but he's not a UFC champ. He wasn't even an MMA fighter ever in his life, right? And the humbleness it requires for you to say, hey, you, Mr. Interviewer, podcaster, can you teach me a technique in this domain where I am a worldwide celebrity superstar? It's incredible. And then not just did he do that. I mean, honestly, I can imagine that I would have done that. I'm a little bit humble. But here's the next thing I can't imagine doing. This thing that blows my mind, honestly. He allowed Joe Rogan's friend, Eddie Bravo, to video record the session where Joe Rogan is teaching GSP the, you know, the, the, that kicking technique. And of course, Joe Rogan looks a million times better than GSP. Joe Rogan's kicks look amazing. And GSP is like a beginner that's trying to do it right. And he had no problem that that session was recorded and uploaded. That's not easy. Kids, this is not this is not a simple thing. This is not something you can find. Okay, I dare you. Show me another UFC champion that had over five title defenses and where you can point me to a YouTube video where some random person is teaching them a technique and they don't look particularly amazing while they're learning that technique. I, I can't I can't think of anybody else, anyone else that I've seen that I've seen as much footage of looking foolish in the name of progress, looking a little dumb, looking a little slow, bringing people that make him look bad, but help him become better, no matter how good he is. 
That, to me, was GSP's biggest asset once he became a champion. To get to the championship, it was his body, it was his timing, it was his, you know, shooter box wrestling. It was many, many things, I'm sure. But once he was a champion, maintaining that level, his humbleness, his mentality, all the way up to fight night, just second to none. And now compare this with Conor. For all the love that I have for Conor McGregor, and he is an amazing human being, entertaining as fuck, and I was in awe and excited and inspired seeing his ascendancy to championship. It was just something to behold of those, whatever it was, two-year period, three-year period, was just so much fun, so inspiring, so awesome. He's a dope, incredible human being. But when you when I look at Conor, he doesn't strike me as the guy that was comfortable bringing in people that would put it on him. Because anytime you see Connor gets pressured a little bit, he collapses. Connor is probably the best pressure fighter in the first three minutes of a fight. Like he, his timing, his accuracy, his distance is on immediately, and he's incredible in creating this intense pressure very, very quickly. He's an artist at that. But if you don't fold under that pressure, mentally he's diminished. And if you put a little bit of pressure onto him, he instantly collapses. I have to assume that's because he's not used to this kind of pressure. I'm not saying he's not working hard. I'm not saying he's not pushing himself. But he's not used to looking bad. And I'm certain that in his sparring sessions, in his training camps for these fights, nobody makes him look foolish. Nobody looks, makes him look bad. And nobody's putting the pressure on him. And so when it happens in a fight, he's not prepared for it. He doesn't know how to deal with it. And he is stagnated, which is something that I loved about GSP in all his career. He never stagnated. He, always, he changed his game, right? After he was knocked out in that huge upset from Matt Serra, he changed the way he fought. He adjusted his game. He evolved. He had a real evolution, which is difficult to do. Again, it's easy to say this. But it's so hard to do when you're at the pinnacle, at the peak, at the top, to keep evolving is harder than when you're at the beginning. Nobody's looking. Think about this. All right, I'll ask you like a simple mind experiment. If you had to learn how to do a certain dance, uh, some dance moves that you're not really great at, let's say, right? You have to learn the salsa. Or some, well, maybe salsa is a bad example because you have to do that with somebody else. Some fucking dancing routine, right? What is easier, learning that dancing routine and maybe watching some videos and trying it and practicing it at home, alone at first, right? Until you get a little comfortable, you kind of understand how it's going. Is that easier to get started? Or do you think it's easier to go on a stage with 10,000 people watching you while you are now learning the, these new moves and this new dance. What of those two scenarios do you believe would be easier and what would be harder? Yeah, exactly. And that's what it must feel like when you're the champion and you're putting together camps. And now you have the problem that when you want to learn new skills or really expose a weakness of yours and fix it that you would have to look tremendously bad in front of lots of people in front of people that will tweet that will share stories whatever it is even in front of yourself now you're the man you're the champ so seeing yourself struggle day in day out that's not for everybody i think that connor is somebody that as he was successful that was giving it incredible self-belief. So that was kind of the spiral up. The more success he had in these training sessions when his gym, the better it was at the fights, the better it was at the fights, the better it was at the training gym, the more his belief just built and built and built. And eventually he thought he was invincible. But once that spell was gone, he was very beatable. I mean, similar to like Mike Tyson, everybody was like defeated before even going to the ring. Mike Tyson was kind of a destroyer of worlds until he got knocked out. And then Mike Tyson didn't even believe that he is a god. And all of a sudden, his opponents didn't believe he's an unbeatable god. And boom, all of a sudden, he was beaten. And Mike Tyson had a similar problem where he loved to be the bully and it was an amazing, probably the best bully ever in boxing. But if he didn't get you out there and if you didn't seem intimidated, he was collapsing. He was giving up, right? So what do we learn from all of this? Well, I don't know. 
Um, I think the best question we can ask ourselves, since most of us aren't UFC champions, is do I make myself look foolish in the name of progress? And do I continue to? What is maybe an area of your life where you used to be putting yourself out there more? You used to be seeking advice or coaching or exposure in areas where it made you feel uncomfortable or a little foolish and goofy in front of others and were bruising your ego? And just ask yourself, when was the last time I've experienced that? When was the last time I was humbled? Especially in an area where you're already good at. Especially in an area that you've established yourself in. An area where you have accomplished a bunch where your ego feels safe, where you are competent. When was the last time I've done something that was risky in that area that really challenged me? And if you can't think of a recent example of this, maybe now's the time to learn from GSP and make sure that looking foolish while in training camp so that you can look brilliant while in the real fight is a formula that's very difficult to do, but would benefit a lot of us, especially as we are more successful in life, more successful in our career, and maybe seeking to keep evolving and growing versus stagnating.